Good day. I am Jane Stanley, Director of the National Institute for Infant and Child Medical Music Therapy, a partnership between Florida State University and Tallahassee Memorial Hospital. A while ago, the student chapter of Western Region of AMTA contacted us and asked if we could provide some information about the certificate program in becoming a NICU MT, the specialty of learning to work with premature infants and conducting uh, evidence-based medical, medically oriented music therapy. So we applaud the initiative of the Student Association and we're very happy to provide this information to you today. We're going to give you an overview of the process of completing this training. So our purpose today is to give you an overview of the eight-hour lecture component that is the first step of completing the certificate program. And at the end of this video, you will learn today about completing the other procedures in uh, completing the entire process of becoming a NICU MT. Um, the eight-hour lecture component is usually given every year at the AMTA Music Therapy Conference and at other times during the year, or sometimes at regional conferences and sometimes at other locations throughout the United States. But one signs up for the lecture and attends the uh, component to learn information about premature infants. The information is designed to acquaint you with the problems of premature infants and their parents. The process of trying to um, deal with an infant through the intensity of the NICU experience is extremely stressful for parents, and parents are important as uh, clients also in the therapist dealing with the particular situation. We acquaint you with NICU medical treatment so that you're aware of the medical problems of the premature infant and the priorities that the medical community has for their treatment and how music therapy integrates as part of the services to that child. We acquaint you with the characteristics of premature infants. We think this is one of the most important variables to make you aware that premature infants are not simply small babies. They are entirely different from a new, typical newborn. The premature infant that is finishing embryonic development in the neonatal intensive care unit is extremely fragile. It is important that music therapists be aware of the potential harm that we could possibly do, the harm that we might do to the development of hearing or the other senses, the harm that we might do to the wiring of the neurological system that occurs in the third trimester of development. We have been very cautious over 30 years of research in identifying uh, uses of music that have proven to be beneficial and are very specific in outcomes. We have uh, formulated the research and then the clinical protocols to fit the medical model. And so when we say this is an evidence-based treatment approach, we mean that we are using techniques that have been thoroughly researched and that outcomes are predictable based on um, the strength of the research in terms of awareness of what uh, the expectations are for what this would do for the child. And when we say that it fits the medical model, we are uh, thinking in terms of fitting all of the aspects of the possibility of being on the interdisciplinary team, uh, providing input into the needs of the child, getting specific referrals from a physician for specific protocols, meeting the standards for reimbursement in the same ways that speech therapy, physical therapy, or occupational therapy do, and that we can state the expected outcome. So if a symptom like stress is a problem for the infant, we know exactly what the research shows can be done with music, we know exactly how we should do that procedure, how loud the music should be, what the content of the music should be, and we're very specific about the application of music by gestational age. So a premature infant is going to be uh, dealt with in developmental aspects by gestational weeks from the time of birth and however far the gestational process had uh, been accomplished until the end of the gestational development period, which would be equivalent to a term infant. For instance, 
if a premature infant is born at 28 gestational weeks, that means that the infant is about 10 weeks early. And from that, that point forward, the infant will be referred to as a 28-week baby, and then the following week is a 29-week baby. So gestational development is measured in weeks, and dramatic changes occur within the period of a week. So music has to be matched to the needs of the child at each developmental stage. So this process of learning about uh, the needs and characteristics of the developmental aspects of the embryo match the research to say at what stage we are doing a particular technique with music and what the outcomes might be. I keep using the term outcome because that's what the medical community expects in the medical model. Let me give you an example. If you go to the emergency room with pain in your abdomen, someone looks at your symptoms and maybe gives you a diagnosis of an illness like appendicitis. You are not then prescribed an aspirin as though you had a headache or a counseling session to help you deal with your anxiety. Someone says, oh, you have appendicitis. The standard for care of appendicitis is to have an appendectomy, so you go for surgery. The medical model insists that a treatment be specific to a diagnosis and that the diagnosis was arrived at by an assessment. And that if we do that gold standard of treatment for that illness, there is an expected outcome. If I gave you an aspirin for appendicitis, the outcome might be very dire. It might not help you and you might die. If I give you the gold standard of an appendectomy, the outcome is once your appendix is removed, you should heal and be perfectly fine thereafter. And the surgeon even knows how many days it would probably take you to heal. You're given expectations about what exercises or other things you might need to do to fully rehabilitate. But there are expected outcomes with each standard. So as we talk about music therapy for premature infants in this highly intensive medical environment of the neonatal intensive care unit, we are going to use that same approach of being specific about what is the problem this particular child is having and what does the research show might be the most effective use of music. So we have identified the specific protocols in this way and you're going to see a number of charts four or five that proceed from here, all organized in the same way. In the first column, you're going to see symptoms or problems, and then you're going to see what the music interaction would be that deals with that problem, and you're going to see a gestational age at when we would recommend starting this treatment. So some uses of music can begin early, others are too complex for the immature neurological system and come much later. So that Gestational weeks of 28 weeks indicates that uh, music might be used in passive ways much earlier than the other aspects that we're going to talk about a little bit later. And then finally, the last column of the chart tells you what the outcome would be that you could articulate to the medical community that if this is the problem the infant has and we do music at this age, this is what that we, we might expect and that the research shows would be the outcome for doing this. So we have divided these um, charts into the needs of the infant and the needs of the parent and into the new program that we're doing, the needs of the infant on discharge from the NICU as they make a transition into the home environment. So in this first chart, you can see that there are a variety of symptoms. We're talking about stress reduction for the premature infant. This is a huge problem for the premature baby whose neurologic system is immature and is being combated with the sounds of alarms and machinery in the NICU itself, with the uh, interruption of sleep cycles, uh, with medical treatment, with surgeries, with aggressive forms of life support, things like um, ventilators that are uh, breathing for the infant or pushing air into the lungs, um, and painful medical procedures that are done daily to provide medications or to provide feeding. So one of the greatest problems of the premature infant is that they may not thrive in the NICU. They may not grow and develop. They may not gain weight due to stress. We can use music as a way of reducing stress and we can start fairly early on. The other thing you're going to learn about are the gender differences. The research has shown that female infants are much more 
um, advanced in audiological development and the ability for the brain to process sound than our male infants at the same gestational age. So certain procedures, as they become more complex in music stimuli, divide into differences in how to do the procedure for males versus females. So we talk about passive music listening, literally with no social interaction with the infant, simply providing music information uh, music in the environment for the infant as a positive experience to mask aversive stimuli and to provide stress reduction. It has an impact on other problems that the infant may uh, have and it's a quite a valuable technique. Another aspect of what we do is look at the use of music to actually teach the premature infant new skills or skills that are extremely important in making progress toward discharge from the NICU. So one of those things is the use of the PAL or the pacifier activated lullaby system that uses contingent music to teach sucking. Uh, premature infants neurological system is too immature to feed by mouth until 34 gestational weeks. Some infants are born as early as 24 weeks, 10 weeks earlier than that. That means those babies will be fed by two for up to 10 weeks that bypasses any taste sensations and bypasses any sucking that is needed. By the time the baby matures to 34 weeks, they have difficulty transitioning to feeding by mouth. We use music to reinforce sucking that transfers directly to feeding and improves uh, the ability to feed quickly and leads to faster discharge. Um, we have even used this technique with infants on the ventilator teaching babies to breathe on their own uh, as opposed to letting the ventilator breathe for them. And so music contingent upon taking your own breath causes um, the baby to breathe more often on their own and they are um, removed from the ventilator a little bit faster which has very long term consequences for their um, development. Um, there are other issues of neurologic development that becomes problematic in the NICU, like hyper-responsiveness and overstimulation. The brain cells actually quit dividing when the baby is overstimulated, which happens frequently since the neurological system is so immature and it's easily overwhelmed. So there is a very special music technique that we use for neurologic enhancement to help the neurological system develop faster and acclimate to increasing levels of stimulation. We make transitions as from those very specific kinds of medically oriented music therapy to more developmental uses of music therapy as the baby gets a little bit older and moves toward discharge. 50% of premature infants will need special education at the time they uh, are ready for public school education. And we feel that NICU music therapy is one of the earliest interventions that we can do. It can begin in the NICU and we can train the parents in how to help the baby achieve developmental milestones. We are now developing programs to help the parents with transition into the home environment. Um, the premature infant at discharge is characterized as being very Ill, irritable is very neurologically immature still and therefore doesn't sleep for long periods of time, may cry more often or need to be fed more often. It can be very exhausting for the family caretaker. So we are using music to try to assist with those particular problems in the home. So as we deal with infants, we're also dealing with parents. This is a family-based form of music therapy uh, to constantly be checking in with the parents to see how they're doing and what they need and we get referrals for actual parent interact interactions that are much like the counseling or personal interactions that music therapists do in other medical settings. Um, we deal with the parental stress um, and not all of the premature infants will survive the NICU experience so there is a special uh, pediatric hospice component that you're trained in when you do this program and uh, the ability to provide counseling for parents with anticipatory grief who may be aware that their infant is not going to be able to survive. Um, but as we move through dealing with parent needs, 
the happier aspect is to be able to deal with discharge planning and training and the transition to home. But the NICU MT works in both of those areas. Um, we also find that after the infants go home from the hospital, those developmental delays become apparent and we have designed programs for children to be able to come back into the hospitals to do group situations with their caregiver to learn music activities that facilitate developmental gains um, and to uh, be able to provide those one-on-one -on -one in the home environment to the parents. Um, as you do the eight-hour lecture component, you will also learn about what we refer to as NAS, Infants Neonatal Abstinence Syndrome. Those NICU infants are not premature. They are full-term infants, but they're born with addiction to um, opioids or to other drugs because the mother was using drugs while she was pregnant. So the baby is quite ill going through withdrawal symptoms from those drugs about the first three weeks of life. They are in the neonatal intensive care unit. They are characterized as inconsolable, crying a great deal, extremely agitated, having um, clonic seizures and other kinds of motor uh, discomfort that is all a part of the withdrawal process. And our NICU MTs are often asked to work with the NAS babies because they, are, they appear so uncomfortable and the medical services don't deal with a lot of those symptoms of discomfort. Uh, almost all of our NICU MTs report that they have good uh, results with NAS babies using uh, several me uh, music therapy procedures that we will train you in and help you identify their uses with the infants. So we will teach you about the babies, their parents, and then this very common request for dealing with NAS infants. We will teach you to be developmental embryonic specialists and developmental specialists for the premature baby growing up in the NICU. And all of that occurs throughout the eight hour day where you also use the textbook that we've written to help you catalog and keep uh, track of all the various information that we're teaching. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to Ciel Gutierrez, who is our wonderful full-time music therapist at Tallahassee Memorial Hospital. For the NICU, she coordinates all of the institute training programs, and she is also coordinating the in-home transition program and the services to our children that come back for um, services with their parents to learn about music therapy for developmental purposes. And she will talk with you about how to complete the entire process to get the certificate in NICU MT um, with our program. CL Gutierrez. Thank you, Dr. Stanley. Um, I really enjoy being the coordinator of the National Institute for Infant and Child Medical Music Therapy. It really is such a joy working with those music therapists that are interested in receiving this certification. Um, as Dr. Stanley mentioned earlier, there are three components components to becoming um, NICU MT certified. The first component that we've mentioned is the lecture component, um, which is eight hours. And as we mentioned, that can be completed at national conference or regional conference or other times that the lecture component is offered. The second portion of the training um, is the clinical field work component. That is a two-day training either held at Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare in Tallahassee, Florida, or it is held at Norton Women's and Children's Hospital in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, that is a fabulous time to just really put all of the NICU knowledge that you have to um, work with the infants, and we teach you how to handle the infants hands-on, um, which is just a really wonderful opportunity and unique part of our training. And the third component is the outside reading component, which is followed up with an exam. Um, and once you've completed the first two components, you will send in your payment for the outside reading, complete the outside readings, um, finish the exam, and if you pass the exam, then we will add you to our master registry, which can be found um, at the website link that you see right here. Um, that is also the website link that you will use to see most current dates for clinical fieldwork training dates, as well as lecture training dates. Um, and you can begin this process as an intern. Um, we recommend for interns to begin with the lecture component, and then once they become board certified, they can continue forward working um, throughout the rest of the certification. Um, and at the end of it, you will not only be put on our registry, as we said, but you will re 
receive a certificate and um, a pin that says you are a NICU MT. Um, so if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to me at cl.gutierrez at tmh.org. I would be happy to hear from you. Um, we hope that this has been a nice comprehensive view of how to become NICU MT certified and uh, we look forward to working with you. All the best. Bye.